Regeneron Pharmaceuticals Inc. against Chimad Limited. This appeal is about an attempt to patent a genetically engineered mouse. For some years, mice have been used by scientists as platforms for the development of antibodies suitable for use in treating humans. They encountered two main problems. The first was that humans generally reject mouse antibodies. The second was that if the first problem is countered by fitting human genetic structures into mice, so that they in turn develop human antibodies, the mice react adversely to the inserted human genetic structure and become less efficient at producing antibodies. The solution to this on pass was the development of a hybrid genetic structure known as the reverse chimeric locus, consisting in part of human genes and in part of mouse genes. This hybrid structure was a major scientific advance achieved by the claimant Regeneron. The court was told that mice with a hybrid genetic antibody structure are being used, among other things, in the race to develop treatment for coronavirus. But its effectiveness was thought to be dependent upon the amount of the human element which could be inserted into the hybrid structure. Regen developed a method of creating a hybrid structure which contained only a small part of the human genetic material and then sought to patent any mouse containing such a hybrid structure, regardless of the amount of the human genetic material inserted into it. At a later date, Chimab developed a mouse with a hybrid structure that contained all the relevant part of the human genetic material. Regeneron sued Chimab for infringement of its patent monopoly, and Chimab responded by alleging that Regeneron's patent was invalid due to what is called insufficiency. The monopoly granted by a patent is part of a bargain between the inventor and the public. It is called the patent bargain. Patents play a very important role in incentivizing scientific inventiveness, particularly in the field of medicine. The inventor gets sole rights to make and sell the patented product for a limited period, and in return, the public gets from the inventor the know-how which will enable others to make the product when that monopoly expires. When combined with the general knowledge already available to the public, the disclosure, or teaching as it's usually called in the patent, must be sufficient to enable a skilled person or skilled team to make the patented product. That is what the requirement of sufficiency means. The question in this appeal is, when the patent claims a monopoly over a range of products, whether the teaching in the patent must be sufficient to enable all classes of product within the scope of the patent to be made, or only some classes or types within the relevant range. Here, the relevant range extends from mice, like Regeneron's mouse, with just a small part of the necessary human genetic material in the hybrid structure, to mice like some of Chimad's mice, with all of it, are or are thought to be at the relevant time much better platforms for the development of antibodies than the former. The Court of Appeal considered that Regeneron's invention of the hybrid genetic structure was so important that it was sufficient that it, the teaching in its patent enabled mice to be produced with only a small part of the relevant human genetic material embedded in it. The court therefore upheld the validity of the patent. Chimab has appealed to this court. By a four to one majority, this court allows Chimab's appeal. I give the leading judgment with which Lords Reed, Lord Hodge and Lord Sales agree. Lady Black gives a dissenting judgment in substance agreeing with the Court of Appeal. The majority conclude that the sufficiency condition for the validity of patents requires that the teaching in the patent should enable the skilled person or team to make the whole of a relevant range of products for which the patent seeks monopoly protection. This patent claims protection for Regeneron for all mice fitted with a hybrid antibody genetic structure. The range constituted by the amount of human genetic material embedded within the hybrid is relevant 
because it greatly affects the efficiency of mice as development platforms for human antibodies, or at least was believed to do so at the relevant time. By contrast, the patent also protects mice both with short tails and long tails, but that is not a relevant range because the length of a mouse's tail is irrelevant to its value as a development platform. The sufficiency requirement is a basic principle of UK and European patent law, as laid down by a number of authorities which are analysed in my judgment. It is an important aspect of preserving the bargain. It is too deeply established a principle now to be disregarded or watered down, even in the case of an important scientific invention like this one. Chimab's appeal is therefore allowed.